Paddy, today on Flipping Science, we're going to be looking at diluting. So in chemistry, every now and then we dilute uh, really strong solutions down to a level which makes them easier or safer to use. So if we're doing a titration, for example, if our solution that we're using is too concentrated, our volume of uh, that we'll be extracting from the burette will be too small. And you won't be able to get enough resolution out of that. So by diluting, we can have a bit more elbow room. So to do dilutions, we use uh, volumetric flasks and pipettes. And you need to match your pipette with your volumetric flask so you get the right level of dilution that you need. So, for example, down here I've got a volumetric flask of a 1 litre, 500 ml, 250 ml, and 100 ml. And I've got a variety of pipettes here, 1, 4, 10, 15, 20, and 25 ml. So, if I wanted to dilute a solution by a factor of 10, what glassware could I use? I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. So if I wanted to do a 10 times dilution, I have a variety of glassware I could use here. I could use the 25ml pet and the 250ml volumetric flask. You take your volumetric flask, divide it by your volume of your pet, and that gives you your dilution factor. I could also use the 10ml uh, pet and the 100ml volumetric flask. To do the dilution, uh, we use a pipette, a pipette filler, and a volumetric flask. So I'm going to zip away now and do a 10 times dilution. On a coloured solution so you can see how it works. Three, two, one, go! Okay. And here I am. Before you start, make sure the solution you're diluting is homogenised. So make sure it's of even concentration. Check your pipette to make sure it's the right size. Put on your pipette bulb. Very carefully insert it into the neck of the volumetric flask. And start sucking up your liquid. When you're sucking up, make sure you go well above the blue line. We're doing this over a sink so that we don't spill anywhere. Look, I'm well above the blue line. How about that? Now you need to remove the pet filler and shove your thumb on really, really quickly. Don't do it like that. So, you're well above the line. You're over the sink. You're slowly dripping out by rotating your thumb. I sped it up a little bit because I took the time to do this. Make sure you're on the meniscus, not below the meniscus. I'm below the meniscus. <laughs> Trying again. This time I'm trying to go quicker. Oop, well below, well good. This time I'm taking a lot of time, slowly rotating the pipette underneath my thumb. And let's have a look. Meniscus is right on the edge line. That's a good one. And I'm very quickly going to add that into my volumetric flask. I'm going to make sure that I'm touching the bottom of the pipette on some glass as it's leaking in as it's draining in. Again, this takes, this takes a little while. That makes sure that you don't get any drips or splashes leaving. Leave it sitting against the glass inside the neck of the volumetric flask for a few seconds afterwards in case there's any drips. And there we go. Now it's time to do the dilution. So add a little bit of water. Once you've added a little bit of water, shake it around to make sure it mixes in nicely. So add until you're about half full in the bulb down the bottom of the volumetric flask. And again, homogenize, shake it to homogenize. Add a little bit more until you're about two thirds full down the bottom. And homogenize. And add until you get just below the neck of the volumetric flask. This time I'm going to invert and homogenize, so I'm stoppering, I'm shaking it upside down. Do that a few times. And now, so I just get into the neck now. So I'm just getting into the neck of the volumetric flask, making sure I'm not going over the etch line. So you can just see where I am compared to the etch line, so I'm just underneath it. So again, I'm stoppering, I'm inverting, I'm homogenizing. I'm going to do that a few times. Now's the bit where you need to get very, very careful. You're going to add drop by drop so that you get right onto the etch line. So you need to be eye on level with the etch line. Add drip by drip. Again, the addition of one drop should see the meniscus of the uh, liquid sitting on the etch line. 
I'm using my finger to help see where the meniscus, the bottom of the meniscus is. So now you can see, I can see my meniscus is sitting on my etch line. That's looking pretty good to me. All right. So now again, I'm going to stop her. I'm going to invert and homogenize to make sure the mixture is completely mixed so that we don't have a concentration grade as we go through the bottle. And there we have it. That's my diluted sample. And you can compare it to the original and you can see the difference in color. Away I go. All right, key point to think about is the number of moles of the substance being diluted in the pipette is the same as the number of moles that will end up in the volumetric flask. You're changing concentration, you're not changing the number of moles. So what that means is the concentration and volume multiplied together in the pipette has to equal the concentration and volume uh, multiplied together in the volumetric flask because the number of moles of substance being diluted is the same. So when it's in the pipette or when it's in the volumetric flask, the number of moles is the same. What is different is the volume of the solution. So let's do an example question. So the question says to produce 50 mils of 0.5 molar potassium iodide solution, what volume of 1.5 molar potassium iodide will be needed? So this is our starting solution. This is our concentrated solution. We're diluting it down here. So I'm going to start by writing the equation. So we've got uh, C1V1 equals C2V2. I'm going to use this one as my first initial one so we can figure out the volume here. Concentration there is 1.5 moles per litre and we don't know what volume of that we need so I'm just going to keep that as V1. My concentration, my second concentration is 0 0.50 moles per litre and we're going to multiply that by the volume and I'm going to turn that into litres. So we've got 50 moles so that's uh, 0 0.05 litres. Now we need to rearrange the equation. So we've got 1.5 multiplied on this side, so to switch it over the other side, we divide both sides by 1.5. So V1 equals 0 0.50 times 0 0.05. We're going to divide that by 1.5, and that will give us our volume. So now I'll go to my calculator. 0 0.5 times 0 0.05 equals divided by 1.5 and I got 0 0.01 and round that off 7. I think we've got two significant figures everywhere else, so 0 0.017. So 0 0.017 litres. So 17 mils, um, if we do that to two significant figures. So I need 17 mils of the strong solution to make the 50 mils of the weak solution. And what you do is you fill up the rest with water. So we've got a second question. It says, Timmy weighs 60 grams of sodium hydroxide and dissolves it in one litre of water. He then dilutes that by a factor of five. What's the concentration of the diluted solution? So I'm going to start by figuring out what the concentration of the original solution is, and then from there I'll do a five times dilution. So first thing is we've got uh, mass of sodium hydroxide is 60 grams. Uh, molar mass of sodium hydroxide... It's going to be 22.99 uh, plus 16 plus 1.008. So that's the molar masses from the periodic table. All right, so to figure out my number of moles of sodium hydroxide, it's mass on molar mass. So 60 divided by 22.99 plus 16 plus 1.008. I'll go to my calculator and figure that out. 60 divided by, I'm going to put it in brackets, 22.99 plus 16 plus 1.008. Close that off, and my answer is 1.5. So, to a uh, startling number of significant figures, my answer is 1.5 moles. So, I'll put that in my uh, answers. So, we get uh, 1.5 moles. My concentration of sodium hydroxide initially in my concentrated solution is uh, C equals N on V. My number is the 1.5. My volume is 1 litre. So my concentration is 1.5 moles per litre. That's a very interesting L. All right, last step is he's doing it five times dilution. So we're making this five times weaker. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide that by 5, and that's going to tell us what the concentration of the final one is. So we're diluting that down by a factor of 5. We're making it 5 times less strong, so 5 times less concentrated. So I go to my calculator. I divide that by 5, 
and I get 0 0.3. I shouldn't need a calculator for that, but I did anyway just to check. So doing the dilution, so now we get 0 0.3 moles per litre. So I've diluted it by a factor of 5, going from 1.5 moles per litre down to 0 0.3 moles per litre. So on Flipping Science today, we looked at how to do our dilution, uh, what apparatus you use, and looking at some example questions of dilutions. That's it for Flipping Science today. See ya. Mm -hmm.